the gut microbiome can improve osteoporosis or make it worse. In this video, I'm going to explain osteoporosis in simple terms, what it is, what actually happens in bone, and how the gut microbiome can improve the condition or make it worse. Osteoporosis is a chronic bone disease. There's loss of bone tissue that leads to reduced bone strength, the bone becomes brittle, and can easily lead to bone fracture. Osteoporosis can occur in both men and women but is most common in postmenopausal women because of the loss of estrogen. In recent years, research has shown that the gut microbiome plays a very important role in osteoporosis in multiple ways. I will be discussing these shortly. But first, it is important to know the seven pl main players involved in bone health. First and second are two types of cells, one is a bone building cell and the other one is a bone resorbing or removing cell. So one type of cell is responsible for building new bone and the other for removing old bone. There's a constant modeling of bone, but in health there are equal amounts of bone of old bone being removed and new bone being built. In childhood and early adulthood there is more building than removing, but in later life the opposite happens more removal, and if too much is removed, it results in osteoporosis. I will explain the causes of osteoporosis shortly. So I mentioned two of the players so far, the bone building and the bone removing cells. The next one is calcium. I will talk about that a bit more. The one after that is vitamin D. Vitamin D is responsible for the absorption of calcium from the gut into the body. The fifth one you may not have heard of is a hormone called parathyroid hormone. Nothing to do with thyroid hormone. Before I explain the function of this hormone, I would like to discuss calcium a bit more. 99% of the calcium in the body is in the bone. The other 1% of calcium is in the blood. This 1% is vital for life. The small amount of calcium is needed for muscle contraction, and remember, the heart is a muscle, so pretty important to keep that muscle functioning. The rest of that 1% is also needed for nerve conduction and for clotting of blood. Again, important if you cut yourself and you are bleeding. All vital functions. Now back to the hormone, the parathyroid hormone. It is responsible for keeping the blood calcium at the required level for those functions mentioned. If the level of calcium in the blood drops, this hormone triggers the bone removal cells to remove bone and release the calcium to the blood to bring that level back up to normal. So the blood level of calcium is kept within a narrow range for those vital functions. It also explains why the blood calcium does not tell us about osteoporosis. Many of my patients have mentioned that as their blood calcium is normal, so they can't have osteoporosis. Not true, as explained. The sixth component of bone health is vitamin K2. This vitamin is responsible for moving calcium into bone and reducing calcium buildup in blood vessels. Interestingly, several studies have shown that regular intake of vitamin K2 reduces incidence of coronary artery disease. The seventh player is collagen, which is a protein. Calcium and collagen make up most of the bone volume. Collagen provides the soft framework on which calcium is laid to provide the strength of bone. What causes or aggravates osteoporosis? These are smoking, excessive intake of alcohol, not being physically active, and some medications. Regular exercise, of course, improves or prevents osteoporosis. Now I'd like to discuss the role of the gut microbiome, what it plays in osteoporosis, in either improving it or making it worse. We know that a healthy microbiome means that there's adequate amount and diversity of friendly bacteria, keeping control of the unfriendly bacteria in the gut. I've talked about the friendly bacteria producing short-chain fatty acids 
in Mavidion fiber. These short-chain fatty acids have multiple and far-reaching effects on bone health. To help you understand this, I want to explain another concept. We are made up of specialized cells, that is skin, muscle, liver, gut lining, bone, etc. These cells are constantly dying off and are replaced by new cells. It is not practical for the body to have spare cells of every type of cell in the body. Instead, it has stem cells or primitive cells that under special triggers can morph or differentiate into the, different, into the required ones. For instance, we have primitive blood cells that can differentiate into various cells of the immune system. The one primitive cell can be converted to many different specialized cells. Likewise, we have primitive cells that develop into bone building cells or bone removing cells. The short chain fatty acids, specifically butyrate, released by the friendly bacteria into the body, travels up and impacts those primitive developing cells and directs them into bone building cells, but also blocks the effect of bone removing cells. I don't know about you, but I think this is amazing. You eat your vegetables, you digest them, your body extracts all the nutrients and passes the waste fiber to the friendly bacteria that turns into butyrate that is released and reaches deep into the bone to stop bone loss and build new bone. How wonderful is this symbiosis? You look after your bacteria by feeding your waste fiber and it gives you gold. But what happens if you feed the wrong bacteria, the unfriendly ones? They damage the gut lining, that is produce a leaky gut. They also produce inflammatory substances that pass through the damaged gut lining and into the circulation. These substances then trigger inflammation in the body and they stimulate the activity of the bone removing cells and cause or aggravate osteoporosis. So unhealthy bacteria cause inflammation that stimulates bone removing cells. I mentioned earlier that in women who are postmenopausal, they lack estrogen that triggers osteoporosis. However, there is hope, as there are such things as plant estrogens, also called phytoestrogens. These are extremely weak estrogens in that they cannot replace human estrogens or act as hormone replacements. But the friendly bacteria come into rescue again, in that they can convert the phytoestrogens into active forms that have a positive effect on bone building cells and suppress bone resorbing cells. The highest amount of plant estrogens are found in soy and flax seeds, but also found in smaller amounts in legumes, seeds, fruit, vegetables, and whole grains. Another positive effect of friendly bacteria is that they produce vitamin K2. K2 also occurs in animal-based foods like meat, egg yolk, fermented, and fermented cheese. The highest amount uh, of K2 in food occurs in the traditional Japanese dish called natto, which is fermented soybean. Natto can be found in uh, Japanese grocery stores. In summary, osteoporosis is a serious disease and can be treated with prescription medications. There are a lot of supportive measures and they are stop smoking, reduce alcohol, increase exercise. See my exercise video for more information on that. Increase the variety of vegetables. See my video on fiber for that. Calcium supplements uh, if the diet is inadequate. Vitamin K2, vitamin D supplements. Make sure you have adequate protein intake. If you have osteoporosis, do not treat it by yourself. It is a serious condition even though you may not have any symptoms. Please discuss this with your qualified health professional. I hope you found this video helpful and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.